Okay, uh, we're back. Um, this time we're going to do something, uh, probably something that I don't use too often, but uh, it's a method. It's nice uh, to sort of show some of these methods to close the loop. Uh, I have a tendency not to use things where I have to grab a calculator often. Uh, I don't have one available. A um, little older than you, and you probably have a calculator always available with you on your cell phone, but that hasn't been the case in the past. So we're going to do decimal the hex conversion, uh, hexadecimal, we say hex for short, and we're going to do it by the repeated division by 16 method. And um, I'm not good at dividing by 16, and I'm going to use a calculator uh, to do that uh, for me. And um, just like converting decimal to binary using repeated division by 2, and we use 2 because um, binary is a base 2 system, hexadecimal is a base 16 system, so we do divide by 16. And also likewise, uh, in that method uh, from converting decimal to binary, we only had a remainder of 0 or 1. When I divide a decimal number by 16, the remainder is 0 to 15. Uh, if I get a larger remainder of that, I didn't do the division correctly. Uh, so these two methods do that. Um, one thing that we need to do uh, on the left-hand side of my screen here, you'll see I have a chart that I have, and I put the decimal sequence from 0 to 15, and I put the hex sequence of numbers from 0 to 15, and that's because um, I remember hex to decimal from 0 to 9 because they're exactly the same. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, that's, that taxes my memory a little bit, so um, I usually write that chart down on the edge of the paper or wherever I'm working uh, to make sure I get that right. So let's start uh, like we did before with uh, something simple, like uh, 56. Okay, that's a decimal number. Uh, I'm going to set it up just like I did before, sort of the upside, uh, upside down division uh, that you had before. And I'm going to do 16, and that goes into 56 how many times? So 56 divided by 16 on my calculator comes up with 3.5. So I have 3, and 0. 0.5 times 16 will give me what the remainder is, and that remainder is 8. Now, you might be able to do that in your head. Um, I'm just sort of explaining this out to do it. I'm not showing you the calculator on my uh, display up here. I, I figure you, you can do that pretty good already, um, calculator-wise, and all calculators are different, so uh, that is there. Now, this is going to end pretty quickly. Um, and that's because when we divide by 16, we're taking a big chunk out of there at one time. So when I do 16 into 3, that goes 0 times with a remainder of 3. And make sure you put that remainder there. That's very important. Just like the binary method from decimal to binary when we did the thing, um, I called them bits, but this is digits, right? This is the least significant digit. This is the most significant digit. Um, that might be hard to find because we're used to writing numbers in a horizontal fashion. But when we take the answer and we write it in horizontal fashion, we want to get it right. Now, I'm going to put that base 16 because 38 could be a decimal number. It could be a, uh, a BCD number. Uh, we're going to give another example. This one's pretty um, easy to do, but th let's make sure that we did this right. If I had my calculator, I could put 38 base 16 in there, hit the key to do the decimal conversion. Uh, I could do that, but I'm going to do another video on a calculator. Um, let's make sure, let's look at this in binary, right? Because that's my method for doing that. So I know 8 is 1, 0, 0, 0 in binary, and I know 3 is 1, 0, 0, and I know the weights 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, right? So um, 32 plus 16 is equal to 48 plus 8 is equal to 56. And I'm pretty confident in my binary conversions and doing the weights 
Um, so this method works for me and I can work it on paper and through my head. So I not only have an answer, I've, I've verified my answer and do it. By the way, uh, when you convert a decimal number to a hexadecimal number, you absolutely, unless the numbers are equal, you know, in the low 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, those conversions are equal. But for the most part, uh, hexadecimal adds that A, B, C, D, E, F sequence where decimal goes uh, straight from uh, 9 to 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So your answer better be smaller. And that's just common sense. And that's another check. Um, that means that you understand how this works and you can do all those checks and see what's there. So uh, we, got, we got a good answer. And I think we've established a procedure. And the nice thing is the procedure is exactly consistent with doing decimal to binary as it is from doing decimal to hex. It's just the number you divide by is 16 and therefore the results uh, you get are a lot um, a lot higher or the remainder can be 0 through 15 so that's that's due and I'm not always good at picking a good one that's due 2968 uh, I think that should be enough to convince you that you need a calculator right 16 into um, 2968 divided by 16 and if I did that right in a calculator I got 185 times with a remainder of 0.5 and 0.5 times 16 gives me 8 so remember uh, when you're using a calculator you're gonna get um, you're, you're not going to get fractional remainders. You're going to get decimal uh, points, and 0.5 times 16 will give you uh, the actual remainder. So uh, I probably, if I get 185.5, I subtract 185 from it. I leave the fractional part there, and I take a times 16, and that comes 8. So some of you can do that in your head. 16 into 185. So 185 divided by 16 on my calculator gives me 11. And there is a remainder part of the answer, and it's 0.5625. Some people can work that out very quickly. I can't. So I'm going to subtract 11 from that. I uh, hit the wrong key here. Let me enter that in again. Um, I'm going to subtract... 11 from that so 185 divided by 16 equals 11.565 if I subtract 11 it just leaves the fractional part and I take that times 16 and I find out that the remainder is 9 now some people are already hating this procedure uh, it takes too many keys on the calculator I told you I don't use it too often I don't hate it but I don't use it too often, um, and it's uh, that's probably one of the reasons why. So 16 goes into 11, what? Zero times, right? With a remainder 11. Now, I, I, we've picked a number that gave me a remainder that was above 9. So I have to take these remainders, which are in decimal, and convert them to hex. Well, 8 and 9, that's an easy conversion. 11... That's why I wrote this chart over here. Uh, 11 is B in hex. And then I have to remember this is the least significant digit. This is the most significant digit, which means when I convert this vertical number to horizontal, uh, the 8 has to be in the least significant digit position. And the B must be in the most significant. And that's my answer. Once again, good technicians. Um, you're, you're going to check that answer and I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that exercise to you. I'm not going to check it here, but I could convert it to binary, but the bigger these numbers get, the harder that gets and the more involved. So I probably would just do use a calculator to do it. So I'll check to make sure that's right off screen and I'll have to edit my video if it isn't right, but, um, we're going to assume it is. And we've shown you the method that you can use or the procedure to turn decimal to hex. And we don't have to remember anything because we know this procedure already. We're just using the 
division by 16 instead of division by 2 like we did from decimal to binary. Uh, hope that helps. Um, review the video a number of times. Uh, try numbers on your own. And uh, good luck. See you in the future.